Hi guys, it's Grandma here. I have a story for you and a poem. I think you may recognize the story. It's called The Cock, the Mouse, and the Little Red Hen. Once upon a time there was a hill, and on the hill there was a pretty little house. It had one little green door and four little windows with green shutters, and in it there lived a cock, a mouse, and a little red hen. On another house, close, hill close by, there was another little house. It was ugly. It had a door that wouldn't shut, and two broken windows, and all the paint was off the shutters. And in this house, there lived a bold, bad fox, and four little bad foxes. One morning, these four little bad foxes came to the big bad fox, and they said, Oh, Father, we're so hungry! Yes. We had nothing to eat yesterday, said one, and scarcely anything the day before, said another, and only half a chicken the day before that, said the third, and only two little ducks the day before that, said the fourth. The big bad fox shook his head for a long time, for he was thinking, and at last he said in a big, gruff voice, On the hill over there I see a house, and in that house there lives a cock. And a mouse, screamed two of the little foxes, and a little red hen, screamed the other two. And they are nice and fat, said the big bad fox. On this very day, I'll take my great sack, and I'll go up to that hill, and then in that door and into my house sack, I'll put the cock and the mouse and the little red hen. I'll make a fire to roast the cock, said one fox. I'll put on the saucepan to boil the hen, said the second. And I'll get the frying pan to fry the mouse, said the third. And I'll have the biggest helping when they are all cooked, said the fourth, who is the greediest of them all. So the four little foxes jumped for joy, and the big bad fox went to get his sack, ready to start on his journey. But what was happening to the cock, the mouse, and the little red hen at this time? Well, sad to say, the cock and the mouse had both got out of bed on the wrong side that morning. The cock said the day was too hot, and the mouse said it was too cold. And they came grumbling down to the kitchen, where the good little red hen, looking bright as a sunbeam, was bustling about. Who'll get some sticks to light the fire with, she said. I shan't, said the cock. I shan't, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. And off she went to get the sticks. And now who'll fill the kettle from the spring, she said. I shan't, said the cock. I shan't, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. And off she ran to fill the kettle. And who'll get the breakfast ready, she asked, as she put the kettle on to boil. I shan't, said the cock. I shan't, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. All through breakfast time, the cock and the mouse quarreled and grumbled, and the cock upset the milk jug, and the mouse scattered crumbs on the floor. Who'll clear away from the breakfast, said the poor little red hen, hoping they would not They would soon leave off being so cross. I shan't, said the cock. I shan't, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. So she cleared everything away, swept up the crumbs, and brushed up the fireplace. And now who'll help me make the beds? I shan't, said the cock. I shan't, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. And she tripped away upstairs. But the lazy cock and mouse sat down in a comfortable ar armchair by the fire and soon fell asleep. That's silly. They just had breakfast. Now the big bad fox had crept up the hill and into the garden, and if the cock and mouse hadn't been asleep, they would have seen his sharp eyes peeping in at the window. brat a tat 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 said the fox, who knocked at the door. Who can that be, said the mouse, half opening his eyes. Hey, get up and look for yourself if you want to know, said the rude cock. Oh, it's the postman, perhaps, said the mouse to himself. He may have a letter for me. And so, without waiting to see who it was, he lifted the latch and opened the door. And as soon as he opened it, in jumped the big fox and a cruel smile on his face. Oh, 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 squeaked the mouse, who tried to run up the chimney. Cock-a-doodle-doo, screamed the cock as he jumped on the back of the biggest armchair. 
But the fox only laughed, and without much more ado, he took the little mouse by the tail, and he popped him in the sack, and he seized the cock by the neck, and he popped him in too. Then the poor little red hen came running downstairs to see what all the noise was about, and the fox caught her and put her into the sack with the others. Then he took a long piece of string out of his pocket and wound it around and around and around the mouth of the sack and tied it very tight indeed. After that, he threw the sack over his back and off he went down the hill. Oh, I wish I hadn't been so cross, said the cock as they went bumping about. Oh, I wish I hadn't been so lazy, said the mouse, wiping his, his eyes with the tip of his tail. It's never too late to mend, said the little red hen. And don't be sad. See, here I have my little work bag, and in it there's a pair of scissors, and a little thimble, and a needle and thread. Very soon you will see what I'm going to do. Now the sun was very hot, and soon Mr. Fox began to feel his so sack was heavy, and at last he thought he would go lie down under a tree and have a sleep for a little while. So he threw the sack down with a big bump, and very soon was fast asleep. Snore, snore, said the fox. As soon as the little red hen heard this, she took out her scissors and she began to snip a hole in the sack, just large enough for the fox to creep through. Quick, she whispered to the mouse, run as fast as you can and bring back a stone that is as large as yourself. Out scampered the mouse and soon he came back dragging a stone behind him. Push it in here, said the little red hen, and he pushed it in in a twinkling. And the little red hen snipped away at the hole, and it was large enough for the cock to get through. Quick, she said, run and get a stone that is as big as yourself. Out flew the cock, and soon came back quite out of breath with big stone, and he pushed it into the sack, too. Then the little red hen popped out and got a stone as big as herself, and she pushed it in. And then she put on her symbol and took out her needle and thread and sewed up the hole as quickly and as ever she could. When it was done, the cock and the mouse and the little red hen ran home very fast. And after them drew the bolts and the shutters and they drew down the blinds and then felt quite safe. Now the bad fox lay fast asleep under the tree for some time, but at last he woke up. Oh dear, dear, he said, rubbing his eyes and then looking at the long shadows of the grass. How late it is getting. I must hurry home. So the bad fox went grumbling and groaning down the hill till he came to the stream. Splash! In went one foot. Splash! In went the other. But the stones in the sack were so heavy that at the very next step tumbled down Mr. Fox into a deep pool. And the fishes carried him off to their fairy caves and they kept him prisoner there so he was never seen again and the four greedy little foxes had to go to bed without any supper but the cock and the mouse never grumbled again they lit the fire and they filled the kettle and they laid the breakfast and they did all the work while the good little red hen had a holiday and sat resting in the big armchair no foxes ever troubled them again and for all I know, they are still happily living in their little house with the green door and the green shutters that stands on the hill. Well, that was cute. That fox got what came to him. And here's a nifty poem I found. Somebody said it couldn't be done, but he with a chuckle replied that maybe it couldn't, but he would be one who'd say so and to uh, say so till he'd tried. So he buckled right in with the trace of a grin on his face. If he worried, he hid it. He started to sing as he tackled that thing that couldn't be done and did it. Somebody scoffed, oh, you'll never do that. At least no one has ever done it. But he took off his coat and he took off his hat and the first thing he knew he'd begun it. With the weight of his chin and a bit of a grin without any doubting or quibbling, he started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done and he did it. There are thousands to tell you it cannot be done. There are thousands to prophesy failure. There are thousands to point out that you, by, one by one, the dangers that wait to assail you. 
but just buckle in with a bit of a grin, take off your cat coat and go to it. Just start in to sing as you tackle to thing that cannot be done, and you'll do it. That's a very encouraging poem. All right. Um, I'll be done with this one this time, and I'll go and read another uh, chapter of Little House, and uh, hopefully find uh, some more fun stuff for you here soon. Bye.